From its inception in the 1970s, Sunshine Community Gardens has put food on many a table while connecting urban folk to the root of its origins. Its mission is more important now than ever, a public space where people can come together to grow organic food. Basically our goal is to have as many people gardening as possible. I love gardening, I love growing vegetables, and where I live is too shaded. I knew I would have vegetables, but I, I never planned on the wonderful social experience. A lot of people tell me I do more talking around visiting than gardening, but that's part of community gardening is visiting and enjoying the company. It's a community of people that I've become friends with and I hang out with them, talk to them, talk about cooking, talk basketball. Also, it's people who work in these buildings around here, they often come over and stroll through the garden at their lunch time or their coffee break time. I do the cooking in my family and the way to cook well is to control your ingredients. All the produce, any, everything we grow, it's so, so much better than anything you can get. Even, even the organic produce that you get at the store, this is so much fresher because it's literally just been picked an hour ago. Sunshine resides on land just west of Lamar, leased from the Texas School for the Blind and Visually Impaired. In their partnership, Sunshine Gardeners work with the students who now have their own plots. They're gonna use this as a teaching uh, strategy with their students. And they've just completed their own greenhouse, so they're gonna have a greenhouse where they're gonna propagate plants as well on their property. So that's a really nice uh, educational uh, fit that we have. Volunteers operate Sunshine Community Gardens, from executive decisions and maintenance to the website. We also did the MICA 6 food bank, which uh, has about 10 churches that have food banks. And we supply food to them on a weekly basis, twice a week. This nonprofit is supported by membership fees, sweat equity, and the annual plant sale held on the first Saturday of March. For decades, Sunshine has educated backyard gardeners about organic practices. Anyone is welcome to come by to see how food and flowers can be grown without herbicides, synthetic fertilizers, or pesticides. Good bugs help keep the bad bugs away, and I don't use a tiller on my garden. I just still do it the old shovel because I don't want to chew up all my worms. I've got a lot of good worms and good bacteria in the soil. And I use a lot of compost. Compost is the main ingredient behind the garden's abundance. Landscaper donations contribute mulch and carbon fuel to blend into the compost pile to balance the nitrogen from garden clippings and seasonal turnover. And we have people just drive in here or bicycle in here with their little bag and go over and they've saved all their peeling and scraps and put it on the compost box. I had been sort of a failed tomato grower before and for the first time we're having really good um, production. It's the first time I've been growing vegetables in raised beds and using tons and tons of compost. At Sunshine, community builds knowledge where gardeners learn from each other. And I use this hay fork because the tines are thinner and more widely separated and reduces the possibility of digging right into a potato. There we go. Let's see what we have. Ah! Very nice. Ooh! These are about the biggest we've had so far. And I've gotten much more from being here for three years, talking to other gardeners and seeing what they grow and understanding the climate than I would ever have gotten gardening in my backyard. It's also a testing ground. What variety works best? Randy Thompson and his wife, Janet Adams, experiment with tomatoes. You have to diversify your portfolio, so to speak, because you never know what the weather's gonna do. And some years, the heirlooms do really well, other years, the hybrid. And one way of ensuring that you have a crop of some kind is to vary what you plant. And plus, I'm just a geek. I like to grow a bunch of different things. I'm growing a caper. Capers are native to the Mediterranean. They typically only get 17 inches of rain a year. and even in a drought year here in Central Texas, we're gonna get more than that, so I had to elevate it and provide better drainage. That's a secret too for finicky time. In composted raised beds framed by scavenged rocks, he's always got plenty to share. Jack McAvoy's technique unites summer corn and cucumbers. Cucumbers always get beat by the heat here, so we planted the corn in front of them on this side because of the way the sun travels through the day and it will grow up and it will be a barrier for shade. And that way, hopefully, hopefully, the cucumbers will grow and not shrivel on the vine. 
Plots vary in size, but even the largest rely on crop rotation to assist plant health. Last year right there were the tomatoes, and this year they're here. Next year they'll be over in that plot, and then move up to the other plot, and then three or four years later they'll be back down here, so I just keep things moving around. I could leave it fallow or plant a, a cover crop like buckwheat or black-eyed peas, or I could put in beans. And of course, uh, we'll probably follow that, uh, the tomatoes in the fall, with lettuces and uh, kale and uh, maybe even carrots. Some people have to just about put tomatoes in the same spot, but you keep a healthy soil, a lot of compost, and a lot of worms and good bacteria in the soil. That's a big thing, is keep healthy soil. Membership fees pay for water, but deeply composted and mulched beds retain moisture to conserve that resource. Sure, there are a few demon insects, but vigilance is a key factor to control them. I think gardening is kind of like, you know, having a, having a baby. You gotta be committed to, you can't just feed a baby and put it back in the crib. And so you can't just water, you gotta go look at your garden. Above and below, you'll find the volunteers that naturally control insect problems. It's a neat place for a lot of other reasons other than gardening, and part of it is the wildlife that's at the community gardens. Mingling flowers with food is more than just pretty. They're a shout out for beneficial pollinators. The pollination piece of it is really important. Right. You know, it's great to have flowers in your garden so you have pollination across your, across your vegetables too. So apart from the aesthetics, which are wonderful, they really are practical too. But you can't censor the wildlife who thanks you for your consideration. Just plant more and offer an alternative menu. Randy's sunflowers and water bowls are one strategy. I hope that by providing water to the birds, they're less likely to peck holes in my tomatoes, even though it still does happen. When purple martins return in midwinter, they patrol for flying insects. Robert Jerry constructed the Chimney Swift Tower to attract these insect-loving endangered birds. He relied on George Ann and Paul Kyle's books to get him started. I'm in charge of the carpentry, so uh, I, I like woodworking. Volunteers constructed the greenhouses where carefully selected seeds, along with donated transplants from Gabriel Valley Farms, grow up for the public plant sale the first weekend of March. Volunteers like Nancy Seibert chair the primary fundraiser where backyard gardeners can pick up the best performers. I seek out input of what did well, what didn't do well, so that when we have things, there's a reasonable hope that they will produce in Central Texas. More than just food, Sunshine Community Gardens is actually another urban park and wildlife refuge between buildings and asphalt. I think we need more green space all around. I think it's great for the neighborhood to have a spot that is growing plants and is an organic spot. And it's also like a release for people that live in the city to be able to garden and be with other gardeners. I think it's just a really wonderful place for people to come that are city dwellers.